You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, the in thing now is the Jack Bar syndrome. Everybody wants to go abroad, and it's understandable. People seek greener pastures abroad, but there are those who fall victims of sex trafficking crimes and the syndicates that perpetrate this. What is it like surviving sex trafficking? We're being joined by very lovely ladies who are survivors of this sex uh, trafficking. We have uh, to my immediate left, uh, uh, we just simply want to call her Rachel. Rachel, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, sir. And um, we have Odion also, my far right. Welcome to the program. Okay, well, let's start from the beginning. I'm sure it was a very mouth-watering proposal that came to you, and then you wanted to go out of the country. What was it like? Let me start from uh, Odion now. When I heard about it, I was very happy, excited, hmm. because I never knew that it's going to be something that will make me feel sad, make me not be happy. At the first, when they told me, they said that I'm going to do a nanny job over there. In Dubai? In the uh, UAE. Mm. So getting there, it was something that's different. I saw something different that was like, I'm not going to do this. My madam beats, beats me, beats the hell out of me, shouted at me. I was forced to do what I don't want to do. Mm. Okay, well, when you say they told me, was it a group of people or what? Was it just somebody that approached it, you? It was my friend that approached, approached me, a boy. Mm. We were so close together. He told me, look at, there's an opportunity to travel abroad. Mm. I said, what opportunity is that? He said, to Dubai. That the lady said, I'm going to do nanny job then. Mm. I said, nanny job, okay, no problem. I'm going to go. Mm. So, Okay, was it the same story with you? Yeah. Okay, how, how did it get to you? How did this information get to you? It was from my cousin's sister. So when she told me, I was very happy that ah, at last I want to raise my family up. Then they told me that it was selling. Mm. They were going to be selling. Then when I got there, it was something else. Could you speak a little bit louder so that I can hear you? It was something else and when I got there, they told me that if I refuse to do it, that they are going to beat me, then I'm going to still pay them their money. Then anything that makes me to misbehave, any amount of money I've paid them before, they are going to cancel it. Then I will start from the beginning again. So you were supposed to pay them for something that they had asked you to go and make money for yourself. You were supposed yes. to pay them. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. So was it like there was an organization that was taking people there and distributing? Or is this same madame, for instance, let me uh, come back to you, Odion. Was this the same madame that sent someone to get people from home? It's the madame that told people. Yeah. So people will not, like, you will tell someone. That like saying there's a vacancy somewhere. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You will tell the person that. Don't tell them that this is the job they're going to do. They just tell them that they want to go for maybe a catering job, tailoring job, or addressing job. So this is your friend knew what you were going to do, or he was also deceived? He was not. I, 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 I think he knew. He knew? Yes. Because if he, he don't need, uh, they paid him, actually. They gave him money. Hmm. I never knew. When I get there, that is when my mother told me that he gave him money. Oh. And when you came back, did you, dis uh, did you confront him? I didn't even see him oh. when I came back. Okay. When you got there, was it just you or you were many that were doing the same thing? We were very many. Like in our house, we were about to eight to ten girls there. Oh. Three of us came the same day. Mm. Then we met the other girls there. Was it like a brothel or it was someone's house and then they were taking you out from the house? It's someone's house. They rented the house, then they now turn it into a bar mm. and a house. Then maybe it would be like a passage. They would divide the room, each, each of the rooms, small, small for each, mm. each girls. Mm. That was the same thing with you? Yeah. Okay, in case you're just joining us, we're 
talking to survivors of sex trafficking, they went as far as Dubai, having been deceived here in Nigeria that they were going to take up jobs in the UAE. Uh, one of them, Rachel, was promised a, a job as a, a seller or, or, or a store attendant or whatever name you would want to call it, but she didn't know that it was going to be something else. And the same thing with Odion, uh, the way now turned into sex slaves. Now, how was it possible? Because we've heard stories about people who are taken to this, those kind of places, not just threatening you. Sometimes they ask you to swear to some oaths, to some gods that you do not know. That did it happen to both of you? Yes. Okay. So how did you get this kind of salvation? Now you're in Nigeria. Well, that means somebody saved you. How did it happen? Let's begin with Odio. I was returned back by... Because uh, my place, the place we Speak were, up, please, yeah. the place we were, mm. so they bust that place, police, mm. they bust the place, they were fighting, shouting, so they bust the place, we ran at, okay. so I went to the UAE government, okay. to, so they returned me back. Oh, so you were deported? Yes, I was deported back. Ah. Okay, what happened to you? How did you get back home? It was one fifth we were inside because during that period, it was busting period. Mm -hmm. That was when they want everybody to go back to their country. Mm -hmm. So we were inside when they came to bust us. So we all ran out. So I had somewhere before, but the police were actually leaving. So I came out by myself because I was already tired. I was ready to go back home. So I came out. That was how I followed them. Mm -hmm. So when you got there, I'm sure that you had passports before you went to that place. Was it that they seized your passport? Why, why was it so difficult for you to run away as it is um, until you had to be deported before you could get back to Nigeria? My passport, my passport, I didn't use my own passport. So someone's own I used. Oh. That we resemble someone that looked like me. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's also possible that it was your passport that they didn't want to give to you, or maybe both of you, because we hear you can't go to someone's country without a passport. So maybe they process the passport, but you never got to hold it, which means there's a very big syndicate that is doing this from Nigeria to the UAE. OK, now we've seen all that and we thank God that you're back to the country uh, in one piece. No matter what has happened, we thank you for your courage. Uh, for even coming out here to say what you're saying, because it's not everybody that can do what you're doing. But we're interested in, since you came back to Nigeria, what you've been doing. First of all, when did you go to the UAE? That was last year. Last year. What about you? Last year. Last year as well. Okay. Now you're back to the country. What have you been doing? Because a lot of people are still being deceived as we talk, we say, we talk right now. Yeah. So what are you doing to correct that? Because what you face, maybe you don't want another person to face. I'm an estalist. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do waves. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You. In fashion design, I make clothes. Oh, really? Okay, but what about trying to get people to know what happens in the UAE? What are the activities that you've been doing? We you didn't know each other in UAE, did you? No, we know here. Oh, you came back here. Yes. I say organization of survivors. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so in Benin, we walk door to door, house to house, to talk to people, tell the youth, the younger ones, that look at the way they will trick you, talk to you, that we are so 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 something. We are. We want to. My sister or my brother is in abroad. We want to. Uh, carry you for nanny, as job, or to say something. There's nothing like that going on there. It's actually a different thing that you go there to do. So we just tell them, talk to them, that we too, we are survivors. We went there before. So we saw many things, so we have to talk to you guys. Even one of the madam told us that two of our girls traveled ever before we came there. Mm. So the madam said, yeah, he has been talking to the girls, telling them that you push an awful victim of all these stories. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so this group that you have formed, the survivors of the, it has a name? No, we don't have a name. You don't have Just a name. Just survivors. 
Okay. Yeah. That is in Benin City. Yes. How many of you are in that group? It's just four of us. Four? Yeah. So how have you been managing to, to go from house to house? Who takes you from, did you make so much money in Dubai that you are now spending uh, going from house to house? Or is just a one village thing? How, how big do you intend to take these, permit me to call it evangelism, to the people who may be ignorant? We take, as you, we just, I uh, talk to ourselves. Mm -hmm. go you don't have any support from any organization? No. You don't? No. Uh, do you have any plans to talk to the government, for instance? Yes. Yeah. So is someone helping you to facilitate that? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. But you want to talk to the government. Yeah. So if you have this opportunity to talk to the government, what would you tell them? I would tell them that they didn't help put join hands together so that we can talk to the youth, mm. go to villages like Aochi or that, because it's mostly in villages. They will go and talk to girls, pick them from that place, tell them that, look at, deceive them. Mm. They will, from there, take them. Okay. Yeah. There is an organization called Save a Life a Initiative. Uh, it's an NGO. Have you had any contact with them? No. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we too will uh, look for ways to connect you with the right people and all that. But um, it takes courage, like I said, for you girls to come out. You have been trafficked to the UAE. You were deceived. Instead of getting the jobs that you were supposed to uh, get, you were forced into becoming sex slaves, to, into doing prostitution that you didn't uh, dream that you were going to do. But like I said also, we thank God that you got back home in one piece. So if you're watching us right now, know that it's not always greener on the other side. And if it is green, someone might have uh, uh, watered the plants that made it green. So like they said in uh, the gods, uh, the gods uh, are not to blame. I think that's the novel that was uh, Olara to me. The gods are not to blame. Uh, stay where you are. That might just be the best advice that you will get uh, from anybody. And try, try to make a living where you are. Fetch the water where you stand. That might, only, that might be the only uh, fresh water that you have because if you go into a wider body of water, it might just be salt water and you didn't know from afar. We'd like to thank uh, Rachel and uh, Odjon, two survivors of these uh, uh, heinous acts of syndicate or syndicates that take our girls out to other places and deceiving them that they are going to have very lucrative jobs and end up making them become sex slaves. We hope that after now, or now that you're back to the country, that the prosperity you were looking for in the UAE will find you where you are. So whatever we can do in the media, generally I'm not talking about just Plus TV Africa, to encourage you to keep on the good work that you're doing house to house. It's not an easy thing. Even the pastors know this. Even the evangelists know this. Even the politicians that want your vote, they know this. It is a very tedious job. We'd like to thank you for what you're doing. And we hope that through you girls and the other ones that were not able to come here, a lot of people will be informed. Thank you so much for coming on the show thank this you. morning. Well, uh, you've heard it from Odion and uh, uh, Rachel, they were taken to the UAE. Some people are taken to Italy. Some people are taken to other countries of the world with the promise of a better life. And then they end up doing something else. You could fall victim as well. So if you're watching us now, be advised. And make sure that you also tell somebody what is happening. These two ladies are some of the most courageous people I have, I have known, I've come across in all my years on earth for, to come uh, to do what they have done here. Most times you don't even see the faces of the people who confess that this is what they have gone through, but they were able to show themselves. We do hope that every other organization that can uh, will give them the opportunity to talk to the people because every media house has its fans anyway. So let them talk to the people and let more girls especially get to know that it's not always rosy everywhere else than where they come from. 
that's how it's been on the show this morning. Thank you so much, uh, Rachel, for coming. Thank you, Odion, for coming. And for you watching us, uh, thank you for being a part of our show this morning. On behalf of the entire team of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, my name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow. Bye for now.